Good morning, YouTube. Uh, welcome to my 69th VBA tutorial. Uh, I'm going to come on into the next few tutorials on how to use uh, active data objects and SQL to connect to your databases. Uh, but first of all, I just need to go through a couple of things. So I'm just going to do two tutorials and do one on error handling uh, and one on global variables uh, just because we're going to need them both for when we do our active data objects not essential but really helps to support them so i'm going to go through them quickly first uh, so the first one we're going to do is error handling uh, and it's a little bit different to other codes if you're used to java using try and catch we're not going to be able to use that uh, in vba um, so let's just create a new module uh, and put sub and then let's do, 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 just call it anything there we go uh, and we're going to need to create a code with an error in it so i'm just going to reference an incorrect sheet so let's put this workbook dot sheets and then sheet one uh, except we don't want to call it sheet one let's accidentally say we've typed an extra one in there and called it sheet 11 and then dot cells one comma one dot value equals error Right, so when we play this, it's going to say a subscript out of range, which is the error message that you get in your debug screen whenever the you reference an object invalidly. Uh, so if you try and reference a sheet or a workbook uh, with the wrong name, it's always going to say subscripts out of range. When you press debug, it's going to go on to, uh, and show you which line. It, that's gone wrong. Uh, I'm pretty sure I've shown you this in previous tutorials. So just highlight it in yellow, uh, and then you can use uh, F8 to run that line or F5 to try and carry on running. Uh, but it's still going to go wrong. So what we need to do is change that back to sheet one, and then F5 to run, and it will run now because it says sheet one. Uh, and if we go into our sheet one, we'll see that it's got the error written in there. Uh, but Let's say we want our code to automatically realize that that's gone wrong. So let's put it back to sheet one. Uh, and what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to write some code at the bottom of our sub uh, that will pick up the uh, error. So we need to give it a name, first of all, this bit of code. So I'm going to write error and then put a colon. And press enter notice how it pushes itself over to the side so this is essentially a bookmark we're going to send our code to this bookmark uh, whenever there's an error and um, what we also want to do because this is just a bookmark if our normal code gets to this point it's going to carry on and run this code as well so above your bookmark just put exit sub and what this does is if our code runs this line and then uh, keeps going when it gets to here it's going to exit our sub uh, and it's not going to run the error so uh, in here we can just put whatever we want to run when there's an error so in message box uh, you have named your sheet incorrectly uh, and you can put as many lines of code under there as you want and then up here, we're just going to put uh, on error, go to, and then put the name of your bookmark. Uh, and it doesn't matter, it's not case sensitive, it will change it for you. Uh, and you just need to do that before your code here. So let's press play. Uh, and it's going to error and it's going to go to our message box down here. Uh, and if we fix it, then press play and then it's going to run fine uh, and it's going to put error in the cell so that is the basics uh, there's a couple of other things you can do so 
Let's say we've got another line of code after this. So, paste. Uh, and they're both going to error. So let's say 12 and 11. Uh, but we want this one. We don't want it to follow the same rule as this. So we, we want it to just error normally of its own accord. So let's put on error, go to, and then zero. What this does is it just resets our error handler. Uh, and if an error occurs, it's actually going to throw the error rather than um, r rather than uh, following our bookmark. Um, the only problem is because the first one's running, it's going to say it's going to jump down here and not run the rest of it. So let's put that one so it works, and then you'll notice that it goes to subscript out of range. So it runs this one fine. And then it turns off our error handler and then it will just do the error as normal. The other one we can use, uh, and this is probably more useful with for loops. So I'm going to just create a new sub down here. So sub loop error. And then let's do for uh, x equals 1 to 10. Next x, and then let's do this workbook dot sheets, and then let's put sheet ampersand x dot cells one comma one dot value equals loop error. And what this is going to do is it's going to run x up to the value of 4 and then it's going to error with the subscript because it hasn't got sheet number 4 anymore. So what we can do to avoid this is we can just put in a on error resume next. And then what this is going to do is whenever our code throws an error it's just going to keep on running the next line. So it's just going to skip it. So we press play and it runs it all fine because every time this code goes wrong, it's going to go, oh, well, doesn't matter. I'm going to go on to my next line of code. Uh, so use this one with caution. I would never, ever, ever advise uh, what a lot of people do and just sticking it at the top of your code. So if your code goes wrong, it carries on running because you need to catch when something's going wrong because otherwise it can mess up the rest of your code later on. Uh, and believe me, it will cause more good than it does. So if you're going to do this, always use it on a specific thing like this. So we don't want it to error when it's calling sheet names wrong because we know some of them might not exist. Uh, so at the end of that, just put on error, go to zero. Just keep it tidy. Don't leave error handlers in places where you don't have any control over the errors that are happening. We know what error is going to happen here. We don't want it running on the rest of our code because we anything could happen. And that is error handlers. Uh, if you've got any questions, uh, drop them in the comments below or drop them onto our forum. Uh, or also, if you want to download the codes that I'm doing, I'm saving it all. Uh, and if you go onto our website in the uh, description, uh, you can download all the code samples uh, for free. So check it out. Uh, thanks for listening. Hope to catch you in the next tutorial where I'll show you global variables.